let us place ourselves into the presence of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord my God, grant me the grace that all my intentions, actions, and operations be purely ordered to the service and praise of your divine majesty. Amen. The story for this meditation is Saint Ignatius proposed to us three different groups of people, three binaries of people. And, and they they differ in the quality of their wills. And the, the story goes like this. Uh, these three groups of people, they receive uh, by legitimate means a great amount of money. Each one of them received a great inheritance uh, by a legitimate means. And then they find themselves with more money than they could uh, ever imagine. Uh, this money, just keep in mind this money in our case, in our lives, represents all the gifts that the Lord has given us. Everything that we have and everything that we are. Our natural gifts, our family, our possessions, education, opportunities, everything that has blessed us in our lives, every resource that we have at our disposal, that's what this fortune uh, means. And so in the example that St. Ignatius gives us, uh, these, these three groups of people, these three binaries, receive this great inheritance and uh, they realize that even though they received it by legitimate means, they realize that these possessions are in competition, so to speak, with the love of God, and they have lost, lost their peace of mind. Uh, another thing that they have in common is that all of them desire to save their souls and enter the kingdom of God. Uh, they want to become saints and have peace in their souls. And all of them realize that their problem began when they acquired that great amount of money and that they need to do something about it so that their heart can be free from undue attachments and cares. So each binary will adopt a diverse attitude in how to deal with these problems, so to speak. In this meditation, you will determine what attitude best describes your own situation and why that knowledge, with that knowledge, realize what you need to do to acquire the kind of disposition that will effectively bring you to holiness. Uh, the composition of the prayer is that during this meditation, imagine yourself uh, before God and before all his saints and angels. It's a solemn composition, as St. Ignatius calls it. You imagine yourself in the midst of all the angels and saints and before the Lord, and there, you, there you are standing and with the intention of coming to desire and to know what is God's will for you and what is most pleasing in the eyes of God for you. So God wants to show you the truth about your will and wants you to become resolute, to become decided, to become sure of what you want and that you truly want to, to become a saint and to reach uh, a, a will and it's a state of your will that effectively will bring you to holiness. Uh, so the petition, the second petition for this meditation is as follow. Lord, give me the grace to have a will that is both free and strong. Give me the grace to reach the greatest degree of freedom to do your will for me and the fortitude necessary to carry it out. With perseverance and constancy and overcome every obstacle in my way. Give me the grace to desire to do your will with all my heart and rid myself of any attachment that enslaves me. And now this prayer, this petition, and this grace that we ask in this meditation is, is of utmost importance, not only to complete the spiritual exercises, but to embark truly in a spiritual journey that will bring us to the greatest holiness that we could acquire in this life. So uh, take, um, put pause in the video and take a little time to go over this uh, preparation. The story about the people who receive this inheritance and the different attitudes that they need to have. And then also the to imagine yourself before the presence of God with this desire to follow his will and to know what, what his will is for you. And also uh, to ask him that he will draw your will and purify it and strengthen it so that it may be effective for you in pursuing holiness. And so 
come back later for the body of the meditation. Now let's move on. The second binary, I will call this group the faint hearted. These are weak, have neither energy nor courage, strength or zest in their spiritual life. They are the people who fall into mediocrity, always avoid fatigue, toil or discomfort. Anything that would inconvenience them is just not going to fly. And Laziness has weakened them and often they complain that they are exhausted, but in reality, they are not doing much. They, they claim, I want to be a saint, but their I want doesn't mean I will. Their will is ineffective because they do not procure the right means. They procure, procure some means to become saints, but they are not the ones that will take them to where they want to go. Rather than going where God wants them to, to, to go, they want God to come to where they are, to where they want God to be. They want to choose the means of holiness, not the ones that Christ teaches in the gospel. It is like the man that goes to the doctor and receives a treatment plan and, and the doctor tells him, if you want to be healed, you need to stop drinking alcohol, you need to stop smoking, to use salt in your meals. And the, the patient says, okay, 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 I will do that. Of course, because I want to be healed, I'm going to do it. Yes, but, <laughs> you know, I will only drink one glass of wine a day with my meal. And then I will only smoke after dinner because otherwise I become very nervous. It really calms me down to, to have my little smoke in the evening before, before going to bed. And then also, I will only put salt in the meat. Uh, everything else is okay. We'll eat it without salt, but I, but the meat is just tasteless without salt. So I will put salt in the mean, meat. So at the end, this patient, he's going to die. And uh, at most, he will delay the, the heart attack. But he's, he's going to die because he's not procuring the means that will prevent him from deteriorating to the point that he will have a heart attack. So he's choosing some means, the means of his choosing according to his likes and what he wants to do. But they are not effective for the goal that he wants to accomplish with those means. They will not produce the result that he claims to want. So these faint-hearted people, they want to do God's will, but in their own terms, with their conditions and when they feel like it. They want the cross, but when they receive it, they sand it and they make it as comfortable and as convenient as possible. They pray, perhaps, but they do not practice self-denial and mortification. They want humility, but they are terrified of being humiliated. They want to avoid sin, but not the occasions of sin. There is never be, they never go beyond a false holiness, a pretense of piety and a, and a spineless Christianity. Even if they let go of scandalous sin, you know, like the big chains that could uh, bind us, uh, they allow all sorts of attachments, especially to their comfort. Uh, they, they allow themselves to become slave to their comfort and to their convenience and to um, to their way of looking at things and, and to their way that they suppose things should be. There is this kind of people that like to make their own rules for their uh, religious practices. Uh, anyway, they can be described with one word, lukewarm. They are stuck in spiritual mediocrity. And there are examples also in the gospel. Uh, it says uh, another disciple, uh, again, in the same passage, when the Lord is inviting them to follow him, following him, another disciple said, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own death. Now, this, uh, some saints have different commentaries about this passage. And some of them say that he, wa he didn't want him to be 
uh, weighed down with all this business of of the funeral and then the uh, dispose of the state or uh, all these family matters that happen after somebody passes and other saints they say no what happens is that the father was still alive and he was Jesus just let me take care of my my father until he dies and then when he dies I'll come and follow you in other words he he wanted to Jesus to accommodate to his own convenience and schedule uh, rather than him answering immediately to the call of God. So if he if he had if he he left, you know, God didn't the Lord didn't allow him to to follow him. Well he didn't really want it to follow him. He said, okay, I'll follow you, but not now. You know, not now, later. Uh, when my when my father finally dies and then I'm I'm free of all these obligations, then, then I have time for religion. I have time for you. And so if that happened, he went, he took care of his father, and by the time he, time he came back, Jesus had already finished his public ministry. He had already died, risen from the dead, and ascended into heaven. It was just too late. And then another example is when somebody else said, I will follow you, Lord, but first allow me to say farewell to those in my house. And Jesus said, no one who puts his hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. That is, I will follow you. But after I do other things that are more urgent and more important to me um, right now, you know, that's that's what we're really saying to God when we when we give him our conditions to follow him. When we put uh, uh, some clauses in, the, in our agreement with the Lord, I'll follow you. But, you know, somebody say, how big is your but? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 you know, what are your excuses? What are the impediments? What are the things that are more important and more urgent to you than following Christ? So the common denominator is that all these people said yes, but with conditions. They like to negotiate the terms of their, of their discipleship. They want to get the same result, but with means that are of their choosing. And this is something that we need to remember in the spiritual life. We can choose what we do, absolutely, but we don't choose the consequences. The consequences are the things, the uh, what, what happens naturally is kind of the the fabric of reality, how it is done, how, how it is made. And so we, we can choose whatever we want to do, but the consequences are not ours to choose. So I cannot choose that I'm going to live a life of indulgence and then uh, expect that I'm going to become a great saint detached from all these material pleasures. Of course, that's not going to happen. Uh, so this kind of faint-hearted will is far from being a step higher than the fecal one. In fact, it is a worse state than being fecal. Uh, it is worse because it's not a step closer to doing God's will, but it is a greater degree of self-deception. Uh, people who are in this state, they believe to be following the Lord, but they are not following the Lord, in fact. They do not take the Lord seriously, nor the call to holiness seriously, because they say, Lord, Lord, they believe that they are doing God's will, but they are only following their own. The dangers of this kind of will are worse than the previous one. At least the fickle ones have some trace of honesty, uh, but these ones want heaven on their own terms. They want heaven on their timing, and they are the ones that set up the conditions. If they persist in this state, they will simply never become saints. That it is what it is, and you do whatever you want to do, but uh, that's how things are. And so, and another point, this, this state of mediocrity, spiritual mediocrity, is, um, is what the Lord refers to in, in the book of Apocalypse. I don't remember uh, the revelation, I mean. I don't remember exactly where it is, but when he says, uh, you are neither hot nor cold but you are lukewarm. He said, I wish that you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. You know, those are strong words, but that's how the Lord feels about people who are mediocre, who want to invent their own religion, who do not want to follow really the, the laws, uh, the natural laws, so to speak, of the spiritual life. Uh, so in any event, uh, let's move on. Now the third binary, the real will to become saved. What does it look like? Uh, this kind of people really 
want to rid themselves of any attachment that could prevent them from following God's will. They do this in such a way that they are indifferent to either having or not having. They seek only to do what God wants. They want not they want to follow God's will without evasions, without excuses, without diminutions, without reservation, without conditions, and without delay. They are capable of signing a blank check to God and do it at once. There are many like this in, in, the, in the Bible. In the Old Testament, the prime example is Abraham. Abraham, when called by God, he obeyed and left to a land that he was to receive, yet not knowing where he was going. And so the story of Abraham is a, magnific is a magnificent example to meditate on this obedience to God. When he manifests his will, how do I respond? Also, in the book of, um, I believe it's Samuel, <laughs> there we are, Samuel, uh, when he hears the voice of the Lord, he replies, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And listening in the Old Testament means obeying. I'm going to do what you say. And then when Jesus called his apostles, uh, they say Peter and Andrew, they immediately left their nets and followed him. Or James and John, immediately they left the nets and their father, Zebedee, and followed him. And also St. Matthew, of course, when the Lord called him, he left his tax collector post and followed him. And St. Paul, on the way to Damascus, he encountered the Lord and without any human counsel became the apostle to the Gentiles. And he asked the Lord, what do you want me to do for you? Uh, uh, what do you want me to do now? And the Lord told him and he did it. No question asked, no conditions, no procrastination. The Blessed Virgin Mary, of course, at the Annunciation, she said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. A handmaid a slave, in other translations, is one who obeys without question and without conditions. So this kind of will is generous and is eager in responding to the will of God. It does not tarry along the way. There is a story of a priest who was wealthy and because of his family, he was, came from a wealthy family. And he doing in doing the spiritual exercises, he did not know what God would ask of him to do with his wealth. And after this meditation, according to his spiritual director, he acquired this kind of will, this kind of perfect will to do to do whatever the Lord required of him. Uh, and then the spiritual director told him, that, do you really want to do this? Then let's do all the paperwork so that you will dispose of all your wealth, get rid of it. And then when the time comes, when we come to the exercise of making an election, finding what God desires for me, uh, then it's already done. So we just have to carry it out. And so they did that. And, and he did. He went through everything. They had a, a person, uh, a legal, um, um, a, a lawyer, you know, to, to accomplish all the paperwork and everything. And he was ready to give up all his possessions. And then by the time they came to the meditation of making the election, it became clear both to the directee and to the director that God was not asking him that, that he wanted him to keep his wealth and but to administer in a very particular way. So uh, he did that, but he had already made the decision. He had already provided the means to carry it out. But then they came when uh, to the to the discernment that that was not God's will, and so this this is an example that what the Lord is after is not to take away everything from us, but what He wants us is to be totally surrendered to Him. That if He asks something from us, that we will be ready at the moment. To, to yield to him and to do it, to carry it out, to be obedient to his call and to his will. In other words, he wants us to be truly free that we may carry out his will in every, even in, in little things as in greater things that he we will carry out his will. There is another example. This is from the writings of uh, Blessed Federico Osana and he he was a layman and he wrote this on his 40th birthday. He received a um, diagnosis on that day that he had a very serious illness. And so he wrote this in his diary. He said, I don't know if God will permit me to carry it through the, carry it through the end. 
excuse me. I know that today I have reached my 40th year, year, more than half of a lifetime. I know that I have a young and beloved wife and enchanting children, excellent brother, a second mother, many friends, an honorable career. My research has in fact reached the point that I could serve as the basis of a book of which I have dreamed for so long, for a long time. Yet there I am, stuck that, struck down by a serious and persistent illness that is all the more dangerous for the fact that it is probably underlain by total exhaustion. Must I then leave all these goods that you yourself have given me, my God? Lord, will you not be content with only a part of the sacrifice? Here I am, Lord. I am answering your call, and I have no reason to complain. You have given me 40 years of life. If I put before you the years I have lived with bitterness, I see that it is because of my sins which, which have ruined them. Yet, when I consider the graces with which you have enriched them, I again go over these years in your presence with gratitude, Lord. When you, cha when you chain me to my bed for what is left of my life, there will not be enough time to thank you for all the time I have lived. Uh, if these pages are the last, the last that I am writing, may they be a hymn to your goodness. And in fact, they were. He died four months later of this illness, but notice his disposition. He says, if you want to call me now, here I am. This is a will that is conformed to the will of God, a person who does not rebel, who demands not that God should do his will, a person who does not pretend to fulfill God's will only under certain conditions. No, this is a person that is totally available to do God's plan in his life. So some of us, when we do this meditation, we, can, we may come to realize that we need to fight our mediocrity and a mediocrity that maybe we have been dragging through many years, a mediocrity that is either fickle or faint-hearted and we do not know how to fight it. And uh, so, but the, the way to do it is to ask the Lord for this grace, that I may be rid of this mediocrity, that I may move forward and then may desire this grace and may dispose myself to receive it, that I may have a free will, a strong will uh, to, do, to do whatever God wants uh, from me. Uh, so the grace, <clears throat> the, there was a story about, um, uh, this is... Um, this happened in Argentina. A person who was doing the spiritual exercises, at some point, uh, he was he had been in a state of spiritual mediocrity for many years, and then he he said that uh, that when he was in his room, with um, without intentionally, uh, without any intention, he he knocked off his crucifix of the wall, and it fell to the ground and broke in pieces. So, and at that moment, the grace of God struck him because when he saw the, the pieces of the crucifix on his ground, he, he, the grace of God came to his heart and he realized uh, that he was in a state of great mediocrity and that he needed to move out of that state if he wanted to continue. So, and he composed this poem, in in response to this experience that he had at that moment and he says my crucifix fell to the ground and in many pieces your body was broken i saw you there broken and dead what did i do my lord not to kill you what did i do my lord not to hurt you seeing you there so mangled by my own hands what can i tell you i would like to redo everything that i have done gather together all the pieces once again to put them together and glue them back on that wood. I would like, but I don't want to. For this is my torment, this wanting, but not really, this crying for my sins, but not really, this loving you, but not really, this beginning, but not really. And sadness penetrates into my bones. There is not a trace of peace within my soul. This rhythm of misery and discouragement that let me not know, Lord, if I love you. Yet in seeing you thus, so mangled at my hands, I want to want now, Lord, because I don't. I want to love, to love you, Lord, because I don't. I want to cry for my sins, Lord, 
because I don't. I want to begin now, Lord, because I haven't. In summary, I want, I want, I want, with the grace of God. Amen. <clears throat> Now for the colloquiums, we are going to do the same three colloquiums that we did for the previous meditation. And the first colloquium is to Our Lady, begging her for her intercession for the grace to follow Christ and place my life under his banner with utmost poverty of spirit and spiritual detachment for all created things. If and also that if he wills that I be materially poor as well as spiritually poor, uh, that I may have this grace, uh, that I may follow him according to his will. And then um, we finish this colloquium with Our Lady, talking about all the things that we saw in this video uh, with a Hail Mary. And then we ask for the same graces uh, in a second colloquium, a second um, affective time of prayer with Jesus, asking for the same graces and ending with the Anima Christi prayer. And then we will finish the third colloquium uh, talking to our Father in heaven, asking for those, those same graces. And then we end that one with an Our Father. So go ahead and do this time of affective prayer, which is, as I remind you, the most important time of your of your time of this meditation. Now let's have the examination of your time of prayer for today. Did you have a good prayer time or did you have a not so good prayer time? Did you pray for the whole hour or did you shorten your time of prayer? Do you have a suitable place and time? Is there something that could be improved? Do you overcome any difficulties? Are you excessively attached to something? Does this attachment prevent you from making your spiritual exercises well, or does it prevent you from doing God's will in your life? Have I carried out this spiritual exercise with great enthusiasm and generosity, or at least asked for this grace? Did I experience consolation or desolation? And depending on what I experienced, what is it that I need to do about it? And then to end, please pray an Our Father, an Anima Christi, if you want, or a Hail Mary, and the glory be to the Father. And thank you very much. Please pray for me as I continue to pray for you. And we'll see you in the next meditation tomorrow.